All right, at this time, um, we'd like to segue into the Science and Education Division presentation, and it is with a great honor I have to introduce to you uh, my colleague and my friend, Dr. Donna Charlevoix, who will give us the next presentation. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Hello, everyone. I'm so pleased to have the opportunity to speak to all of you. Um, I've had a chance to meet some of you, and I hope over the next couple of days I'll have the chance to talk to everyone um, and, and start a dialogue that will continue on for, for the next couple of years at, at a minimum. So I wanted to um, give you an overview today of not just the student climate research campaign, but what's happening in the GLOBE program office related to science and education. Um, we have had a little bit of a reorganization and we've had a lot of uh, new team members join the GLOBE program office. Um, so there's some new faces and there's also some very familiar faces that you've known for many, many years. So let's see if we can... Technology works sometimes. Okay. Okay, so what I wanted to do actually was just start by acknowledging we have seven staff that are formally a part of the Science and Education Division, and I'm sure that you've seen some of them around, and if you could all just stand, we have um, folks from education um, and curriculum development, we have an educational technologist uh, and his team who's working great wonders in the back. We have communication staff, and we've all, um, I think, if you talk to any of them, over the past couple of months, we've really created a good synergy um, for moving forward in terms of science and education for the GLOBE program. And one of the things that we're really excited about the opportunity to do is to speak with all of you, because as has been said many times before, the GLOBE program office is not the GLOBE program, you are. And so we wanna make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community. So I wanted to um, just give you an overview of the things that we've been focusing on and what we're really um, have been working to support, and excuse me for this noise. Okay. So one of the things that we are very interested in continuing to do is to support the regional offices, the science and education needs, and having a dialogue with the regional offices, primarily through Teresa, but also in some cases directly um, through the representatives. Um, our, our team also continually provides science support to the GLOBE uh, teachers. Questions come in about particulars uh, related to science um, and the help desk sometimes routes those to us in Boulder. Um, we are um, continue to support the GLOBE schools network and you're going to see a lot more activity on that in the coming uh, year or so. One thing also that you may not be aware of that um, our office does primarily through our communications with science and education is communicating your achievements in addition to the stars that Teresa's group does. We communicate with NASA and NOAA monthly about highlights related to science. Um, and those are very important because they keep the visibility of the GLOBE program high and the importance of the GLOBE program in, um, in exploring science. Um, we have been working um, a lot to foster collaborations um, internationally with various scientific organizations, working with the WMO um, and UNEP and other groups. We, of course, are um, continuing to provide support for data, protocols, and activities, and um, you'll probably be seeing a lot more activity on that front over the next year or so. And then one thing that I am very much aware of that's very important to the community is the um, honor roll and um, the honor roll will continue to happen and hopefully we'll even get some feedback from you in the coming 12 to 18 months and see how we can even improve that and, and help you out um, additionally with that. So those are the things that, that the Science and Education Division has been working on. Some of them may be visible, some are probably a little bit behind the scenes, but we have been working really hard to make sure that all of the work that you do related to science um, is um, out there and um, our sponsors are all aware of it. One of the other things that we have done is that we were working recently on World Water Day and Live Earth Run for Water events and um, hopefully you'll be able to talk to some of the um, community members who participated in that. And one thing that um, we, we didn't 
say when we were kind of organizing this was that this was actually a test for the climate campaign. <laughs> One of the things that we really want to do is get a lot of um, large events and engage the community. And so while this uh, World Water Day event was in March and Live Earth was in April, the months coming up to that, we actually were developing a model for how the GLOBE program office can help facilitate events and involve scientists and recruit schools. And so this was actually a great learning experience for us because now we have a model in place so that we can implement events. We can help promote your regional events, which is exactly what we wanted we want to do. One of the resources that came out of World Water Day was a poster that's actually available on the GLOBE website. You can download it um, that explains pH pictorially, so without words and the importance of pH. Students from around the world um, collected pH data for World Water Day. And then um, in cities around the world, um, there were uh, Live Earth Run for Water events. And you can see some of the examples here. Uh, I think that the Live Earth event in Buenos Aires was the largest with 7,000 runners. Um, and the students that conducted outreach to the community explaining the importance of pH and, and water quality and understanding water quality from a scientific perspective um, I think collectively we reached um, over a th several thousand, I think, um, folks that came to the booths in the various cities. So we were really excited about that. But again, this, this was a strategic planning event to engage the community, but also to help support the underpinnings and framework for the climate campaign. Some other things that we've been working on that I would like to share with you, and we'll be kind of unveiling one of these on um, Sunday, is that we've actually become, begun a documentation process, um, creating, we're hoping to create a series of white papers. The first white paper that we have is actually a statement of philosophy for globe science inquiry. You all have a copy in your three ring binder and we'll be using it in the professional development on Sunday. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One, it's a document that explains why we use inquiry in GLOBE. Um, and so it's kind of that, a nice reference tool, but also as you're seeking funding for your uh, countries or your regions, that's a reference that you can use to, to document and say, this is, this is why we should do this. This is the philosophy for GLOBE and inquiry. Another thing that we've been a little bit more visible on um, is trying to uh, communicate in the world of, of current students via social media. So we have RSS feeds, Facebook um, page, Twitter account, YouTube, and Flickr account. And if you go to the GLOBE homepage, these little icons are on the bottom right. And you can click on any of those and get recent information about what's going on. In fact, we've been tweeting the meeting. So if you're not following the GLOBE program on Twitter, um, please consider doing so. There's been some great updates going on. And again, this is a way to kind of increase communication. And this has all been under the premise that we need to really make sure we have ways to network with each other and also to have the students network with each other. Now, Karen um, did a great job kind of providing the overview of work that's been done on the GLOBE website recently. And I know sometimes it can be a little frustrating because you think, wow, well, there's a map. Great. Now what? That's it. But those are just the first steps. Those are actually the first steps in developing out some of these collaboration tools that actually Colleen was kind of asking about before. So one of the things that we did that Karen pointed out was that we have a Google map. And recognize that we recognize that bandwidth is different in different parts of the world. Um, and so we're, we recognize that and we're working that into the full solution. But this is the first step in being able to find schools and locating schools that are nearby. This is not an end product, okay? Like I said, this is gonna help us uh, collaborate. As, as Karen pointed out, we can actually get down to the school page and actually to teacher pages. Um, we have a discussion forum, so when teachers participate in the discussion forums, and we'll be doing a lot of this um, for the student climate research campaign, their recent posts will actually show up um, and the threads on their teacher page. So it's kind of a way to, to promote collaboration and a little bit more um, connectedness with each other. Things that we have been focusing on 
um, in the GLOBE program office in science and education. One, of course, is support of our Earth System Science projects. And we're thrilled to have the opportunity to continue working with all of the PIs on the, the, these projects um, through the next 12 to 18 months when we finalize all the materials and get everything out on the website. Right now, there's just a tiny little bit. Um, but each week, there will be more added. And um, pretty soon, you will see the whole suite of materials. We've also been working very, very closely with Karen and her team in terms of modernizing the online experience for um, the science and education. And I can empathize with those of you that say, well, that's great, but it's a little faster would be better. And I wish we could go a little faster. Karen and I communicate daily. Um, and we're looking at strategic ways to make sure that we can get this happening as quickly as possible. Um, we've been spending a lot of time on the student climate research campaign and I know that many of you are very interested to hear more about that and so I'm going to spend um, most of the rest of the time talking about that. Um, and then I just wanted to list out all the support so I just want to point out that we actually have a lot of stuff going on in the GLOBE program office and our seven staff are extremely busy and there's always something new and exciting going on and um, we're really looking forward to the opportunity to learning what you're do about what you're doing and incorporating that into this work that we're um, working on. Okay, so a couple of words about the climate campaign. Um, we do have one web page up on the website that talks about the climate campaign and there's quite frankly, not a lot of information on it. Um, it's kind of just um, a little bit of information. We actually now, if you go to the website, we actually have a join the student climate research campaign. So I would encourage all of you to go there and, and sign up and register so we can start collecting our database and for piloting materials. And the, um, the bulleted items that you see here um, may look familiar. These were part of the original vision of the student climate research campaign prior to my uh, joining GLOBE in my very short tenure. We basically want to involve, empower, and inspire students. And of course, all in the context of understanding climate and how we can benefit the environment. We have worked very closely with Dr. Williams, our evaluator, to help identify specific goals. Because one of the things that we really want to be able to do at the end of the climate research campaign is identify why we were successful. And I said that purposefully, not if we are successful, why we are successful, because we will be, <laughs> and we're just going to make sure that we have everything in order so that we have all the data that we need. The first goal, really, th the crux of it, we, we would be thrilled if every student that participates in the climate campaign knows the difference between weather and climate. And for, so when I say this to some audiences, they say, really? That, that, that doesn't seem like a big deal. But if you listen to the news, if you talk about, you know, oh, it's been really hot or, oh, it's been really cold, so therefore there's no climate change. If we can get people and students to understand what defines weather and what defines climate and what things control each of those, then we feel that that's an element of success. And my slides are just jumping away with me. Apparently it wants to go to the break. Um, <laughs> so we also, of course, the focus is on research. So we want students to be able to conduct research. And so we're actually working to try to build in a scaffolded approach to walk teachers and students through that process. And then another, um, this is kind of a shortened goal, it's actually much longer, um, but the, the crux of it is that we really want to promote collaborations and interactions between schools, between um, teachers and scientists and students. So what does our timeline look like? We have been planning for um, the past 12 months or so, and that will continue on um, through this um, this, the, the rest of this year and into early next year. We hope to have everything, all our technical infrastructure, all our materials, everything pretty much in place by June of 2011. And that will give us a little bit of buffer time to work out any little glitches. Um, the final preparations will be from June to August. And of course, we will also have our next um, annual meeting in that time period. And then we will have a launch in September of 2011. And right now what we're looking at, and actually this is really high on my priority as soon as, we, as I get back to Boulder, is looking at how are we gonna roll this out. We'll have a global launch and what we really wanna do is make sure that we have regional launches as well. And this is where I hope to have a dialogue with many of you about what's most appropriate, what are you already working on, what do you already have in place, and how can we make sure that this all ties in together. And another thing that you're gonna hear about um, over the 
the course of this meeting is that we really want to be inclusive as possible and so we want to make sure that we have students sharing their work and we don't want them to wait until um, the end of the campaign in June of 2013 because of course depending on the school and nature they may not be in a class with a globe teacher and so we're going to have biannual student virtual conferences um, so that we can make sure that we acknowledge all the great work that students are doing.